Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset, along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 147. This is your host, Holly Wharton. I'm here with today's special guest, Unika Evans. Unika works with heart-centered entrepreneurial women who want to build a career and income around teaching and sharing their genius. Her superpower is first getting you clear on what you want to be known for and how you want to be known, and then creating and launching the strategies, signature programs, courses, ebooks, and more that get you there. Welcome, Unika. Hi, thanks for having me, Holly. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have a conversation <laughs> with you. <laughs> so why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about your background and your business journey and how you got to where you are today with things? Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, so I have been in business now for going on six years. <laughs> I'm actually, I believe it'll be six years in August of this year. Uh, and I actually started out as a freelance trainer and program designer. Mm -hmm. So my background is in instructional design and uh, training and professional development. And back in August of 2010, I decided that I was working entirely too hard. <laughs> I was doing insane hours, putting in 70, 80 hour work weeks, mm. doing a lot of travel. Uh, when you're a trainer, you're constantly on uh, planes, flying back and forth to do trainings and workshops. And I was just running myself into the ground and not getting to spend time with the people that I love or care about or do any of the things that I love or care about, which ironically, traveling is one of my loves and one of my passions. Passions, but <laughs> it was little travel can kind of take all the fun out of traveling. Though. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So when I moved into running my own business, I started out working with youth programs and after school programs, designing trainings for their staff because that's also a part of my background. But what I quickly found was that there were a lot of other women out there like me who had started businesses and were moving more into an online um, into the online realm and really wanted to know how they could start sharing more of what they know, more of their passions and their talents online. And for a lot of them, what they loved about uh, that opportunity was being able to teach and share their genius, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had a lot of people who were asking me, how do I start creating courses? How do I design workshops? Um, how do I basically uh, turn my genius into something that is sellable? and scalable <laughs> uh, so that I don't have been all of my time doing one-to-one -one client work. I can make a bigger impact and reach more people. Mm -hmm. And that's how the shift came about where I moved more towards working with freelancers and solo entrepreneurs and small business owners. But really, it was about just wanting to help women who have a real passion and a real talent and have really spent all of this time refining their expertise and they know how to really make a difference for people, how do, they, how do I then help them to take that and convert it into something that they can share on a larger scale? So how do I help people scale using their genius? Mm. And that's been the last four years of my business. I, I did about two years focusing primarily on after school and youth programs. And then the last four years has been working primarily with, like I said, entrepreneurial minded women. And it's just been a fantastic journey. You know, I've worked with everyone from yogipreneurs and arthur arthurpreneurs and wellnesspreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> but worked with a lot of women who have, you know, have had all of this fantastic professional experience and career experience that they've been honing over the years. And they really wanted to just, they wanted to find a way that they could then turn that into their full-time gigs and run a business on their own and, and become self-employed so that they could have more freedom in their lives. And it's been a fantastic journey seeing the, the sort of progression of my clients from things like part-time nurses or, or, you know, they were working full-time as nurses, but doing their side hustle part-time and then moving into being fully self-employed and seeing the journey that they've gone on and feeling like I was somehow a part of that has just been probably the most fantastic part, even more so than being able to travel and do all of those other things. <laughs> that's really been the best part for me. Yeah, that's really rewarding to see how your own clients go on their own journey from getting started to success. So how was it for you 
to get clear on what your superpower was, because I think that's really challenging sometimes. You know, there's so many things that you can help people with because you've got such a you know broad background in, in training and mm -hmm. so many things that you could have done. How did you get clear on what your superpower was? Really, it came down to, I actually did an interview similar to, similar to this one, and I was talking to someone and trying to explain to her what I do. Mm -hmm. And it became this sort of long run-on sentence, <laughs> sentence <laughs> where I was saying, oh, I help people create courses and create programs and brand those courses and brand themselves as speakers. And <laughs> it became this long sort of run-on sentence with lots of commas and semicolons. And <laughs> so I started talking to a colleague that that I had worked with before I made the jump to being self-employed. And she said, but that's not really what you're good at, what you really, or that's not really what you do. What you do is you help people figure out what they're really good at mm -hmm. and then build a business around that, build a brand around their particular genius. And I had never really thought of it that way. And when I did, it made it so much easier for me to explain to people, this is what I do. And a part of that, yes, is the creating courses, creating programs, designing retreats and, and things like that and helping you launch those things. But really, it's about helping you get to the root of what is it that's your thing? What is it that you want to be known for? And then how do we build a platform for you that supports that, that puts you out front and puts you on the map so that you can really sort of, you know, put your flag in the ground and, and sort of stake your claim as this is my thing mm -hmm. and build your audience around that. So it, it took a it took me really feeling embarrassed about not being able to distill all of that down into here's what I do and finally going to a, a friend who was able to take a broader view of it and say, but this is really what you know, if we're getting to the heart of it, this is what you do. So I needed someone else to do for me <laughs> what I do for my clients. Exactly. And I think that is such a good point because sometimes, you know, we're in our heads all day long. <laughs> so it's exactly. really hard to kind of step away from ourselves and see things with that different perspective that other people can. Um, exactly. So I think that's such a good point that you needed someone else to do for you what you do for your clients. Mm hmm So... Tell us a little bit about what your process is like. How is it that you help people get clear on what it is that they want to be done for? Oh, my process. Uh, well, or is it different what for I've, everyone? It, it is different for everyone. But the best part of it for me is that it's really about having a, a conversation with my clients on where have you been? Where are you now and where are you trying to go? Mm. So let's look at all of the experiences that you've built over the years. And what I find is a lot of people tend to focus on what's their professional experience, mm. where for a lot of them, there's this experience that comes from outside of what they may have done for a living that plays a huge part in what they're doing now. Mm. So let's figure out how you got to where you are now. And then what is it that you're trying to help people do? What's the, the long-term goal of, of what it is that you're trying to help people accomplish? Um, it's not just about helping someone lose five pounds. It's about that you really are on a mission to help a woman feel great mm -hmm. in her own skin. Yeah. So let's get to the heart of what it is that you do and who you do it for. And then where are you trying to take not only your clients to, but where are you trying to move your business to? What do you want your business or your work to look like in two years, three years, four years, without having them feel overwhelmed by feeling like they have to make a five-year plan, mm. <laughs> which, you know, always tends to overwhelm people. Yeah. So it starts with that, really getting a feel for what it is that they're passionate about. And that's my favorite first conversation with someone because I record that conversation and I ask a lot of questions and I'm, I'm really kind of nosy <laughs> in talking to them about that and sort of what's their background. And then from that, it's, okay, so how do you want to be known? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be, are you the person who wants to be um, up front teaching workshops, leading workshops, hosting retreats? Are you someone who has really great ideas and you want to sit down and, and turn that into an ebook or into a, you know an online course? Or do you want to host group programs? What is, what's the way that you want to start getting your message out into the world. Mm. So it's about figuring out the message. How do you want to get it out there? And then looking at what's the existing business or brand that they have. Mm -hmm. And I use business and brand 
uh, because not all of my clients think of themselves as business owners. Mm -hmm. They may be nurses who think of themselves as consultants, but they don't really, they haven't really made that switch in their heads to think of themselves as business owners. But taking those things and then let's look at the existing platform you have and what's the shift we need to make to get you to where you want to go. So if you've been positioning yourself as a wellness coach, but what you really want to do is more motivational speaking with a focus on health and wellness, then let's look at what's there Mm -hmm. and how do we make that transition? What do you need to have in place to make that move. Uh, And it can look like a lot of things from not just helping them go in and actually make changes within the website to the content of the website, but also looking at what are the connections that you need to make? What are the things that we need to start? What are the things we need to do to get you out there as a speaker and really make, you know, and what are the the changes in conversation that you need to start having uh, to make sure that you're able to shift from having people think of you as a coach to having people think of you as someone who is leading conversations as a speaker would. Mm. I think that is such a good point because when you're going through that transition in business, you know, going from a coach to speaker or, or an author or whatever it is that you may be transitioning to, it's like you've got to start thinking of yourself as a different person kind of because mm-hmm. you're taking all of your experience, but you're moving forward and stepping into a completely different role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it can be, as, be something as simple as for some clients, I've had to tell them, I've been looking through the content on your website and you're writing content like like someone who implements. You're not you're not writing the type of content that's elevating conversations for your audience. You're not writing the things that are really going to start to move the needle for your audience. So let's move you away from so many how-to posts and let's move you to posts that are really going to make people stop and pause and think because that's going to be a part of helping them make that transition. And so it's a lot of looking at what's the content they're creating, what are the resources they're putting out there right now, and how are they talking about themselves to other people to help them make that shift. And that's probably, it's one of my most favorite things about what I do because it does bring in a lot of different pieces of my background from the instructional design and the project management to a little bit of marketing and a little bit of branding. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also been what's allowed me to get really in-depth with clients. I mean, I I have clients that I've had for three or four years. (laughs) Wow. Which is great. Uh, And I get a lot of clients through referrals, which is also great. Mm -hmm. But it's what's, what's really great about it is that I have clients who feel like they can call me and say, I want to do X. And they know that if that's not my specialty, if that's not my strong suit, I know the person to send them to. Yeah. So that's really been one of the the best things is that I have a lot of clients who have also been, as I've been going through my own journey in transitioning my business, they've been going through theirs and they've been right there with me and I've been right there with them. Mm, That must be really satisfying to have such a long-term client and see how they've evolved over those, you know, three or four years. Oh, yes. (laughs) The best the best email I got from a client was one who emailed me and said um, it was something along the lines of she had just got her gotten her first paid speaking gig. And she emailed me to say first speaking gig done, something like that. Can't I just wanted to email you and, and share the win and thank you for being on this journey with me. And it was the best part of it was that a year earlier, she swore that she could not be a professional speaker, that she would, no one would ever pay her for it. She didn't think that it was going to be her thing. She really was, she was really worried about getting up in front of people. She's an introvert, mm-hmm. um, all of these other things. And so to get that email from her, and that was probably a year and a half ago. And now the majority of what she does is paid speaking. So wow. when I look back at that, I think, yeah, and she thought she couldn't do this. And now that's really, you know, that's the bulk of her work. So, And how did she manage to kind of step into that completely different role? How, how, what was that process like for her? Did she have lots of kind of doubts and fears along the way? Or was that there, there that are a lot of evolved? There were a lot of doubts and fears along the way. And so I do, I, I never think of myself as a coach, mm. um, more of a mentor maybe, but mm-hmm. there is a certain amount of hand-holding yeah. that I do for my clients and walking them through those doubts and assuring them that they can do it and then figuring out what it is I need them to focus on to get them through that hurdle. And so, for instance, for this client, because she is such an introvert, 
what really helped was to get her thinking less about being up on stage and presenting mm-hmm. and getting her thinking more about the content that she was presenting and how she was going to present it and why she was presenting it in that way, what transformation it was going to help people make. So that was a huge part of it is really getting into sort of her psyche and figuring out what is it that she needs to stay focused on that's going to allow her to get on stage and be herself. Mm. And because she's a very dynamic personality for someone who's, you know, she says she's an introvert and she's, she thinks of herself as quite boring, but she's actually a very dynamic personality. So, Getting into her psyche to help her make that transition, there were a lot of doubts along the way. A lot of what I also do, though, is helping clients to step, take a step back and see the transformation that they help people make so that they can see this is why people are picking you. Mm-hmm. This is the value that you're bringing to the table for people. And this is why your message is so important or this is why the work that you're doing is so important. When you get into, when you get really bogged down sometimes in doing the work, you forget about the overall value that you are bringing to the table for people. And you can sometimes forget to take a step back and really see the journey that you've made. So that's a huge part of it as well, is just helping them celebrate their wins mm. and see, you know, every every win that a client has, whether it's we had a successful launch of an online course, if it's they finished that second chapter of an ebook they're writing, uh, whatever that, that win is, I like to help them pause and, and really celebrate that so they can see, oh yeah, I'm actually doing the thing that I thought I could not do. <laughs> or I'm, you know, I'm already on the path to that journey uh, that I thought that I would never be able to make. Hmm. Yeah, excellent. So what would you say are your top tips on how people can get clear on what they want to be known for? So you mentioned looking at where you've been, where you are now, where are you trying to go? How do you think someone could kind of organize all this information into what it is that they want to be known for? Mm, That's a good question. I think, first of all, it starts with what don't you want to be known for? If you're looking at the body of work that you produce, if you're looking at the experiences that you've had, the content that you've created, if you're looking at those things, ask yourself, what about it do you feel like doesn't elevate a conversation that you're having? Mm -hmm. What about it will not help someone actually move the needle further. Mm -hmm. And then what's the thing that you get so extremely passionate about that you feel that you could talk about for days, that you feel like you could create content on for days? And what's the thing that makes you really want to stick your flag in the ground and say, this is mine, this is my territory, this is what I'm really good at? Mm -hmm. And, And keeping in mind that it doesn't have to be a permanent flag in the ground, which is what I think overwhelms people. They think what I really want to be known for right now is all that I'll ever be able to do. And you can never change it, ever. (laughs) Exactly. You are locked in for life. Um, That would be terrifying. (laughs) But it's, it's what is it, you know, what for the foreseeable future do you want to make your thing? And this is what you're really going to be focused on. You're passionate about it. And you really, it's the thing that you really want to help other people. Um, you know, it's that hurdle you really want to help someone else overcome or that, that thing you really want to help other people master. Mm-hmm. And then once you know that, how are you going to start getting that out there? How do you want to convey your message. Are you a teacher? Are you a a speaker? Are you a workshop facilitator? Like what's going to be your way of really sharing and spreading that message? Mm -hmm. And then going from from there, keeping in mind that part of it's going to going to uh, transform over time. Part of that is going to shift over time and that's okay because, you know, I, I think we forget that our businesses are not stagnant. They refine over time and they re- they get refined with action. So the more we do, the more we f- figure out what works, what doesn't work. We make shifts, we make tweaks here and there, we've refined things and it gets better. So your message or or that genius, that thing you want to be known for is going to get refined over time mm-hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but really knowing sort of what's at the heart of what it is that you're trying to do. So again, I, I think I used the example earlier of you're not trying to help someone lose five pounds. You're trying to help someone feel really great in her skin or in, mm-hmm. in you know, in her own body. And that can look like a lot of different things. So I would start there with 
what is it that I'm that that I really feel like this is the message that I want out right now. This is the thing that I want to align myself with now. And be willing to be selective about that. It's it's really hard to sometimes pinpoint or to to decide on this is going to be my thing because we feel like we have to do all the things. Yeah, and <laughs> and so be, many women are multi-passionate and they just mm-hmm. find it so hard to pin it down to one message. But it's like, if you don't, then you're kind of watering yourself down and trying to do like five different things at once. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and and when you do that, what happens is it's very hard for people to see you as being cons- consistent, mm-hmm. which is, a, you know, I would tell people start with getting really clear on what you want to be known for and being selective about what it is you want to be known for and who it is that you're trying to help. Mm -hmm. But after that, it's being consistent. When you're not consistent, people just, you know, they, and that's what I found is when I wasn't consistent about, I help people share their genius. When I was trying to involve all of these other messages, people couldn't keep up. And I had some people who would follow me because she writes about creating courses. And then other people would say, but she also writes about branding and I don't get it. So, you know, (laughs) it confuses me. (laughs) It confuses people. So part of of being selective is that it's helping people to opt in or opt out Mm -hmm. of working with you, opt Mm -hmm. in or opt out of being a part of your audience because they get it. They either really appreciate the message and they get it and they want to be a part of that Mm -hmm. or they don't. And it's okay if they don't. But you really want to help people opt in or opt out of, of being a part of what you're creating. And part of how you do that is being being consistent. And that means you need to really sort of pinpoint down to what it is that you want to be known for and be consistent about that message. Mm. Again, it will, it will shift over time. But if you get really clear first and start with one message, what you'll find is that your, your, the shift is going to feel more gradual to people. Mm -hmm. And very often it will make sense. Um, The times that I've seen people make a huge shift in their business that did not make sense to me, it's usually because they weren't very clear in the beginning Mm -hmm. and they were trying to do a lot of different things and they got burnt out on all of them and all of a sudden they did something drastically different. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought, okay, that doesn't make quite, that doesn't make sense to me, but okay. And I think that's a really good distinction because like, as you've said, business isn't static. It does evolve over time, Mm -hmm. but there's a way to be coherent about it. Mm -hmm. and consistent so you can make those changes but in a way that makes sense to people otherwise you're just kind of coming out of nowhere with like a brand new thing and it's like whoa she used to do this one thing and now she's doing something totally different exactly confuses people exactly and you know i would i would also just tell your listeners don't be afraid to lead yeah and by leading i mean Regardless of what you do, as you're building an audience, that audience is coming to you because they want to hear, they want you to lead. They want you to say the things that they can't go somewhere else and read. They want you to, to, and by that I mean, they want you to have the conversations that no one else is really having. Mm -hmm. They want you to engage them in ways that no one else is really engaging them. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to lead and to, to have the hard conversations. Look around at other people who are doing what you do. Mm -hmm. who who do what you do and ask yourself what's missing Mm -hmm. what aren't they talking about that really matters or that's really important uh and and don't be afraid to have those conversations with people to write about those things to talk about those things because a lot of times that's what pulls people in Mm -hmm. and that becomes a part of what you're also known for is that you you know people see you as the person who uh who isn't afraid to have the conversations that really matter to them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. Yeah, definitely. So Unika, how can people work with you? I know you've got some products, you've got some services. What's the best way for people to get started? I would say first come over to my blog. My website is uh, www.unicoevans.com. Uh, and my name is not at all spelled like it sounds. That's my mother being difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's Y O N E C O Evans E V A N S dot com, uh, and over on my blog, I write about uh, I write about sort of on a higher level what it is to be known and, and to share your genius. But then also I delve down into the weeds of how do you get your message out there, creating courses, mm-hmm. launching your products and your services, and things like that. But that would be a great place to start, just to see if I if I mesh with people. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell people always don't feel like 
you have to want to work with everyone. You're not mm-hmm. going to be cut out to work with everyone, but that would be the place to start just to get a feel for who I am and what I do. Uh, and then my favorite service is actually my <laughs> my intro level service, and it's called a momentum builder session. And that is a strategy session where I sit down with clients and we get to what is your th- what's going to be your thing, what is it that you want to be known for, what do you need to help get you there. I do a, a a brand review for them. So I look at their online presence. I look at their website. I look at the content they've been been creating. And then I tell them, here are the gaps that I'm seeing between what you want to be known for and where you say you want to go. And then what's out there right now. So here are the things I think you can start putting in place. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite set, my favorite session, because a lot of people from that are able to make a huge shift that then will eventually, you know, it does lead them back to me to say, okay, I'm really excited and I've figured out my thing and I really want to create this course. Can you help me? And I'm like, yes, I would love to. (laughs) Because honestly, those are my favorite people. The people who come to me and say, I've found this thing that I'm really excited about and other people seem really excited about it. And I want to make it into a course as opposed to, I need to create a course so I can, you know, diversify my income and I can make passive income or <laughs> because everyone is creating courses. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. frustrates me so much. Definitely. But I digress. So <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best way to start is head over to the website and, and um, poke around the blog. And then if they are interested, I, I always do a con- have a conversation with people before we work together. Mm-hmm. Just because, again, my expertise may not be the best for everyone. And if it's right. not, I want to direct people to where they should be. Uh, I want to direct people to someone who actually does have the expertise that they need. But, you know, and that also helps me because, like I said, I end up working with a lot of clients over the long term. Mm-hmm. And so it's really nice for them to get a feel for me and me to get a feel for them uh, in the beginning just to make sure that we have the right personalities and we have, you know, that we mesh really well. Mm-hmm. So that would be a great place for people to start. Excellent. So, Unika, do you have any women business mentors? Are there any women entrepreneurs who inspire you? I am so inspired by Tara Gentili. Oh, yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I adore her. Uh, and part of what I adore about her is the fact that I feel like she figured out very early on what she was and was not going to be known for. Mm-hmm. She's never been a personality business owner, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yep, um, you have a definite feel for her personality, mm-hmm. right? But that's not what drives her business. She has a, a real dedication to creating great content and great resources and materials for people. I love how intellectual she is about everything that she creates. Um, and I love that she has this sort of process for making sure that everything she creates and puts out into the world is really exceptional and really moves the needle for people. And that really, that inspires me a lot in in the work that I do. Another person would be Pam Slim. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's actually because Pam Slim, I can still remember being on a plane coming back from a training um, assignment. And this was, I believe, in June of 2010. Mm -hmm. So it was a couple of months before I made the jump to being self-employed. But I was reading Cubicle Nation, Pam Slim's book. Mm -hmm. And that is what made me decide, okay, I'm ready to do this. I can do this. I'm going to start my own business. Mm. Um, And she just inspires me because, again, everything she creates is top-notch, well-researched. She is really, again, focused on creating something that is going to help people. And you get a very strong sense of her personality as well, but that's a part of what she does. It's not – it doesn't necessarily drive what she does. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things I find also with a lot of people who come to me is they feel like they have to be a big personality. And I keep trying to tell them, no, let's step back from that. Your personality is going to be a huge part of it. Yes, it's going to be part of what helps you connect or not connect with someone. But let's get back down to the heart of what's really, what you're really just, what's what you're spectacular at, the thing that you were really put here to do, the message you were really put here to convey to people. Let's get to the heart of that. And those are two women I feel like they have done that really well. Mm, excellent. Thank you. So, you know Unika, where can people find you online? You've mentioned your website, but what are your kind of favorite social networks to hang out on? My 
favorite is Twitter. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with Twitter, but it's still my favorite. <laughs> it's like that boyfriend you just can't get rid of. <laughs> and I am at Yaniko Evans on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've discovered Instagram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no one else was using Instagram until I discovered it. <laughs> That's my running joke. I tell people, oh, I've discovered Instagram. And my friends are like, yeah, we've been on Instagram for months now or years <laughs> now. But I really love Instagram and I'm, I'm starting to spend more time there as well. And I am Ioniko on Instagram. But if people come over to my website, they will see all of those links to, to connect with me in those spaces if they like. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I loved chatting with you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> and your accent. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 147 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.